hands together for him. Come on, you can do better. Put your hands together. Thank you. You may be seated. Father, we thank you for this very special morning. We thank you for your presence. And we thank you for your glory. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for a brand new year. Jesus' name. Again, Happy New Year. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. We pray for you and we speak blessings over you. We are going to have a study mainly from the book of John. <clears throat> Concerning the light which is the theme that God has given us, not only the theme for the year, but it is a lifetime theme. <clears throat> I consider this theme a lifetime theme because this is not an armor that you put on and then you put off. Once you have it on you, it has to stay on you forever. So this is just the beginning of the brightness of your life and it will continue shining forever. But a few things that I would want to share with you today. If you look at the life of Jesus, it was characterized by two things, mainly, which was the, the teaching of the word and the working of the miracles. So it was in speech and in deed. So in order for us to understand the theme, it's good that we go back to our theme scripture and then we focus on the book of John just to shed more light to the light. Romans 13 verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Romans 13 verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. All right, we may be seated now. We are going to look at uh, some few scriptures from the book of John which before we do so i saw that there is a need for us to establish something very critical in chapter number 
8 of the book of John. We are going to hear of certain statements uttered by Jesus. And you know by now that once it is him speaking, you have to take every word that you hear from him seriously. He is the master, he is the creator, he is our savior, he is the king, he is the high priest, he is everything. So if Jesus is better than the temple, if he is better than the angels, if he is better than all of these covenants, it means also what he says is better than everything else that you might have had from anybody else. But it's important that we establish something before we get to hear what he said. We have to look at where he said it from. You are going to hear him speak. And yet the position from which he was standing will add value to the statements. It's not just what Jesus is about to say, but there was a properly chosen location and he identified the most suitable place and from there he felt inspired to utter the statements that we are going to discover in a few minutes. So in verse number 20 of chapter 8 of the book of John, you are about to discover the position. And it's important that they had to put it in the book just so that we consider that a serious matter. Verse number 20. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple and no man laid hands on him for his hour was not yet come. You can read it again. These, these words spake Jesus. These in the words spake Jesus in the treasury. In the treasury, as he taught in the as temple. As he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. No man could lay his hands on Jesus simply because his hour had not yet come. No man in as much as they would have wanted to arrest him But time was the only restriction because his hour to be touched, to be arrested, to be afflicted had not yet come. This goes to also help us understand that unless it is time, you can't be touched. It has to be the right time for you to be afflicted. Unless time permits, the enemy cannot. There has to be an agreement. Time has to agree. And unless time agrees, no hands can be laid on you. And in as much as I've considered this season, 
it's not yet time for you to be afflicted. <laughs> Something will happen to the end. The only time that you can be touched is when it is the right time for you to be touched. And the last time I checked, it's, not, it's no longer time for you. It's too late for the devil to lay his hands on you. But there is something that is very critical in that passage of scripture. These things were spoken as Jesus was at the treasury. He's in the temple. He's in church in a building. And he identified a place where they would keep money, offerings. And then he went to that place and from there he said these words. This is what he said from the place of treasure, from the place of money. Then you go to verse number 12. Let's hear what he said from that place. Look at verse number 12, chapter 8, same chapter. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Okay. You see that? I am the light of the world. Can you see that? Verse 20 was the conclusion of the matter. He's telling you everything that you heard him say. He spoke from this place, a place of treasure in the temple. He was in the temple and he got to a place of treasure. And then this is what he said from the place of money that I am the light of the world. <laughs> How can such a place inspire you to say such words? unless that statement is part of the treasure. This statement is money. You can transact with this statement. So, okay, you tell me why was there a need for them to let us know of such a place? These words were spoken from a place of money. These words speak Jesus in the treasury. In the treasury. In the treasury. The place inspired him to speak these words. So he's showing you something that you can take to the bank. You can have this in your bank account. This is a treasure. This is more than gold, more than diamonds, this statement. That I am the light of the world. Then he goes on to say something. He that followeth me. If you, if you follow the light, if you are to follow me, shall not walk in darkness. Not even an inch. Your January is a walk in light. Your February a walk in light. Right up to your December, it's a journey in what? Light. 
you shall not walk. There is no movement in darkness. Ah! As long as it is I that you follow, your walk will never be in dark. You will walk in light. Read it again. I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You shall have what? The light of life. He calls it the what? Light of life. Light of life. <laughs> it's not just the life of light, the light of life. It's not just the life of light, but the light of life. Ah! Ah! That's why he had to speak from a place of treasure. Light of life. Yes, there is the life of light. And there is the light of life. Where the life is bright. is shiny. The life is glorious. Your eyes will see things very soon. I guarantee you, I tell you. I tell you. Keep on reading. Verse 13. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record you, is... You bear record of yourself. These are the Pharisees. Because yes. he had called himself light and they are now rebuking him for such an utterance that how can you testify of yourself? It means your record cannot be accurate. You're propping yourself up. Whether they were true, whether they were correct, but this is exactly what they do when it comes to them. Okay, keep on reading. You, uh, read it. Thou bearest record of thyself. Yes. Thy record is not true. The record is not true. Because it is you speaking about yourself, yes? Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Yes. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. You judge after the flesh. As for me, I judge no, no man. man. Yes. And yet, if I judge, even if I'm to judge, my, my judgment, judgment is, is true. It's true. Yet, I choose not to judge. If I'm to judge, my judgment is what? True. true. Uh huh. For I am not alone. I am not alone. Alone. I am not alone yet to let them know that where you see me standing now, you are not witnessing an individual. This is not just a one-man band. I am not alone. Watch what he's about to say. But I and the Father that sent me. 
The father that sent me did not remain behind. The sending by the father was so that I transport the father here. I have brought the man that has sent me. God has not called us so that we go away from him. He has called us so that we carry him. We are the transporters. We are the custodians of God. We have God as our treasure. Ah. Read it. And yet I judge, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. Yes. It is also written in your law. It is also written in your law. He's about now to destroy this mentality that I'm not supposed to be talking of myself, considering myself as the light. Now he's saying it is also written in your law. Now it's very important for you people to also understand that he's not, he's not referring to the law as his law. He's saying your law. That's why later on you will see in the same book of John, it will say that the law was brought by Moses, but grace and truth by Christ. Let's not go there for now. Just wanted you to understand why he keeps on referring to the law as your law, your, not my law, your law, your law. It's for you to keep your law, your law, your law. It is written in your law, you Pharisees, because you have attacked me for referring myself as the light. And you are saying if I'm to bear witness of myself, and I introduce myself to you as light, you say, then that um, it's false. It cannot be you saying that. Yet slowly he started to introduce the father's involvement in that declaration. Because you think it is me speaking. You think it is me speaking. Now he's saying the father is here. Now he's about to show them something within their law that they are not considering. It is written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. The testimony of two men is true. That your law says, says so. And I've given you two people here. I'm not alone in this statement. What I've said that I am the light. And if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness. This is not an utterance by only one man. The Father also has spoken. So what is Jesus? Jesus is trying to give us a very strong principle that we're going to apply this year. Then. All you need is to identify what God has said mm -hmm. about you mm -hmm. as the first testimony, mm -hmm. first witness. Mm -hmm. He has spoken already concerning you. And that thing might not be really true in your life until the second Ooh. individual is identified. And that second person cannot be your mother, it can't be your brother, the, the rest of the people forget. You need one more person, which is yourself now, to be in alignment, in agreement with what God has said. So Jesus here is trying to give them a very, very valid principle that as long as we have two 
witnesses over this statement. In this case, it's my father, and I cannot wait for another person to be the second I'm here to say exactly what my father has said, that I am light. So I'm bringing you two witnesses to confirm a statement that I am the light. In case you thought it was just my own declaration, the father is involved in this. As long as we are two, that makes that statement what? Accurate. Now keep on reading. Sit, sit, sit down, please. Sit down. I'm going Verse to show 18. you something there. Uh -huh. I am one that bear witness of myself. Number one, I'm one. I, I bear witness of myself. Uh -huh. And the father... Number that, two, mm -hmm. the father. Mm. And the father that sent me beareth witness of me. So you have how many now? Two. two. Which makes this utterance what? True. So in this case, you are not requiring your friend to be in agreement with what God has said. You no longer need to wait for people. You no longer need to wait for a politician to, uh, to agree. It's God. What? The second, fortunately, it's you. It cannot be. It's, it, that's what you say. Once that number two is established, your, your, your uncle is not even a part of that. Two. <laughs> this is what is going to make every word that he has spoken over you true. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Identifying what he has told you, and that becomes your language. That's what you say. And he's saying it's in your law. It's a law. If I can give you two, just two, this is going to make this statement true. Economy 1915. Hmm? One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or sin. At One? the mouth of two witnesses. Give us the scripture again. Deuteronomy 9 verse 15. Uh-huh. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin. In any sin that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses Every. or at the mouth of three witnesses uh -huh. shall the matter be established. established. The matter is established based on the number of the witnesses. So there are matters about your life that you must look at and you know this is exactly what God said about me. You have come across secrets. There is some indications. There is a clue. God has spelled out certain plans about you that you find in scriptures. What is left now is for the second witness to be identified. And that witness is yourself. You identify that and you speak what he has spoken. That becomes your treasure. That is going to affect your balance sheet. Please take this seriously. He's saying this from a place of treasure. <laughs> <laughs> you see how light can change and improve your cash flows. Light. There is not even one word that is spoken here that will go to waste. Once it is said, and you heard it. Your cash flows are changing. Mm. 
hear me? Some of you, it might take you years to embrace this truth. But the sooner you embrace it, the better you become. You're on face what? Verse this state, this please. I'm about to finish. I'm about to finish. We on fi <laughs> Read verse 18, going to verse 19. Yeah. <laughs> then said they unto him, Where is thy father? <laughs> Let's leave these ones. I think they have a big problem. They have a big problem. We can't solve it here. Look at John chapter 1. Verse number 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Start from verse, verse 3. <laughs> All things were made by him. How many things? All. They are still scientists even to, up to today. They are still trying to find out how th the earth came into being. All things were made by him. The him there from verse number one, in the beginning was the word. The word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was, was God. God. The same that was in the beginning. Now, if you look at that, you, you notice there is something that I want you to see on that part where the Bible is saying that all things were made by Him. There is a reason why we need to look at that. All things were made by Him. The Him there is the Word that made everything. If all things were made by him, all things, if all things were made by the word, I will show you something that he showed me there. If all things, everything was made by him, him being the word, it means everything came out of the word. Mm. Everything you see is a product of the word. What he told me is, what was made by the word can be controlled by the word. That's what he told me. Do you know that just, just that statement, the light has shined on you. Just that yes, statement. All things were the made. devil included. If he was made by the word, by the word, you can control him. <laughs> him. He said to me, if you can identify anything made, be rest assured, it was made by the word. If you want to further create if you want to gain mastery over creation, when I made things, when I made everything by the word, I left a word program in all of my creation. Everything God created by the word is sensitive to the word that created it. Everything. Everything that he created by the word 
He created by the word and he left what he created by the word. He left it sensitive to the word. He controls everything that he created by the word, by the word. He keeps on controlling what he made by the word, by the word. So creation is in constant obedience to its maker, which is the word. The word that made creation. When it is spoken again, creation that was made by the word will hearken. It will obey. You cannot say to the mountain, saying to the mountain, be ye removed, and it moves away, unless the mountain was made by the word. And a program called the word was inserted within every creation. So that the next time a man comes who has an understanding of his authority to speak even over nature, when you utter a word, creation is not going to hear you. Creation hears the creator. To think right now in this first month of the year, right, there is, there is dead silence in the atmosphere. Every creature is waiting for an utterance for you to speak and give creation orders so that everything in this year will support your success. Everything. 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 Be seated. Pharaoh could not allow God's people to go unless Moses came. And Moses knew how to apply certain instruments that have been made available. Nature had to be hired to come and support Moses' agenda. Climate, frogs, he touched even the water world. There was darkness in Egypt. Nature advising Pharaoh to let you go. Mm, 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 mm. Right now, if you're saying that you have suffered, you have suffered, we are suffering, we are suffering, we are suffering. It's just you saying that. When is nature in this country? When is the climate in this country? When are the frogs, Zimbabwean frogs, going to support your release? Why is nature not involved in your deliverance? If it's truly time for you to depart. Someone here does not have an understanding on how to make decrees. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. One of these, I remember, remember that scripture that I came across some years back and I told you about it. God asking Job. <laughs> Can you summon thunder? You know, your Bible declares that you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. But he found a place where he was interrogating an individual who thought was very smart. He's asking him, can you invite thunder and give thunder an assignment? Can you do that? The one tell asking you that question can do so. Because he knows the program that he inserted in thunder called the word. Hast thou an arm like God? 
or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Look for it. Look for it. Look for it. <laughs> he invites thunder so that he sends it away. If you look at his ability, he invites not just angels. He has thunder as an angel. He invites thunder and he gives thunder an assignment. And it goes under the order of the Lord. Ah. Job 28, 26. When he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder... Look for it. <laughs> How many pastors do we have here? Do you have your Bibles? <laughs> Cast thou instruct. Canst, mm. huh? Job thirty-eight thirty-five. Apologies, mm. Father. Canst thou send lightnings that they may go? And say unto thee, here we are. Job. Can you, that's it, can you, look at it, can you what? Canst thou send lightnings? Can you send lightnings before they go, they say? <laughs> can you? Huh? Canst thou send lightnings? That they may go yeah. and say unto thee, uh -huh. here we are. Here we are. It's not one. There are many lightnings in attendance. <laughs> <laughs> lightnings are waiting. These are lights. Lights. That are ready to go and shine and strike. But they cannot unless they are given an order to go and strike. And before that light can go and strike, the light will say, Here we are. We have gathered around you. We will wait here for the next 20 years, next 40 years, until you speak. Give us the direction. You determine the pathway of the thunder. Unless you speak, we cannot go. Why? We were made by the word, and we are ordered by the word. Those that know how to speak like the creator, will cause nature to behave in a certain way. I'm just asking a very simple question. Why is nature not in support of your release? We are talking of thunder in waiting right now. Instruments right now at your disposal. Waiting for an order, an utterance by a child of God who knows that his daddy yeah. is the creator. The power and dominion given to men was not just power over evil spirits. It was power over every creation every creation dominion over every creation when you open your mouth you look into the skies and you say no to resistance You close your eyes, you picture 2024. And you say, no disaster from here to there. 
that word is head. That word is stored as treasure. You can make a withdrawal when you see calamity coming. You can transact for peace when violence is coming. Why? It's part of your treasure. When this light was spoken, it was from the place of money. Be seated, please. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Don't, child of God, don't keep quiet. Don't, 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 don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. You and I know this man that was blind, seated over there, and Jesus was passing by, had he kept quiet. You and I know that for a fact. One mistake. The mistake was not that he was blind. Whether he was born blind or whatever, that was not the biggest. The biggest mistake now. The mistake is not that you are poor or you are sick now. That's a lighter mistake. The biggest one is to keep quiet when you know it is him passing by. And you know again for a fact that Jesus was never going to heal that man. He did not spoken. So when he spoke that man, he ordered the power concerning the works of my hands, command he me. It's God asking you to command him to work a work. I've given you the Ten Commandments to observe. You give me your own Ten Commandments. Order me concerning the works of my hands. Command ye me and see if I can break one of those commandments. Give me an order. Give me an instruction. And you see me work. From this week, you will see me working. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hands. Command ye me. We are waiting for things to happen. Anyhow. All of us here, we, we are anticipating. You go to bed, you wake up, you, don't, you are not sure of what is going to happen. You wait for events to happen. Then you become a victim. Why? Because your involvement in the events, you have no understanding of your involvement. You are a part of the happenings before happenings can happen. You are a part. It doesn't matter it's a natural disaster. People will call it a natural disaster. Why? Because fire has fallen in Sodom. Yet a member of that committee had a say. You are calling it a natural. <laughs> fire just came from... No, 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 no. There is someone among you who participated. If you look into the minutes, he, he had, there's one of you who attended. Yes. He made contributions. Abraham is there. So when fire fell, Abraham was actually looking towards that direction. He knew it. In the next morning, he, he wakes up, he goes to check the level of damage, he knew that fire was coming. He knew. I'm talking about the tomorrow event where statements are given. Words are spoken now before Monday comes. Especially if you realize that it's only you who knows that it's now 2024. Your problem doesn't even, it doesn't have an understanding of a calendar. Think about that. There is no difference between the last day of last year and the first day of this year. There is no difference. Your problem doesn't even, it doesn't have a clue. 
Yet your problem can sense a difference in speech. When you start to speak differently, that's what the problem can feel. Not the date. How come he's speaking? You see, he says, son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Ah, I just said something there when you when you are reading. You see, it's, it's a cry. But the cry was insane. <laughs> Unlike your cry. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Father. Even Jesus, if you do your study, every time he cried with a loud voice, he said, in your cry, child of God, remember to say. So. Ah. And they tried to silence him. Don't talk like that. Until he said, Allow him to come. Because he had cried, say, Son of David, have mercy on me. And he said, Come, let's talk. What is it that you want me to do for you? He said, My sight. He said, I want to see. I want to see. This man was a man of vision, though he was blind. Because he could see himself see. Even before he saw. <clears throat> 2024, be a man of vision, be a woman of vision. Dare to see before you see. It's what you see now that you will see later. I've told you this over and over again. God said to Abraham, look. As far as you can see, I will give you. If God was referring to these physical eyes, then Abraham would have been given a 20 hectare plot. Huh? You can rarely see five kilometers mm. from where you are. Your physical eyes are limited. So G God would have given Abraham a five kilometer land. Mm. But when he said as far as you can see, he's talking of your imaginative ability. You, you can go up the mountain and see physically when you get to the end of your ability to see, close your eyes and imagine, your vision has to travel beyond your physical eyes. If you can imagine it this year, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Lift up. It is, it is the eyes of your imagination, not your optical eyes. Those physical eyes are limited. Look at your capital. You don't have cash for the business. But you, you have it in your imagination. You have another. This man was blind, yet he could see himself seeing before he saw. Have mercy. Why was he crying to Jesus? Because it was only Jesus who had declared himself to be light. He knew. If you are really the light of the world and I'm in this darkness, if only I can speak from a place of darkness, my light will shine. My light will shine. 
he cried out to the light, son of David. I'm in darkness. I'm in darkness. Be seated, please. Verse number three, chapter one of the book of John. Verse three, we go to verse number four. And all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So go home with that in your mind. Never forget that everything that you're going to find created by God, by the word. If you speak a word, it will obey. Hmm? Mm -hmm. It will obey. It will obey. The problem with you, some of you, is that you want creation to act in, your, in a way that you would act if you were to hear the same word. There are people that I know that spoke words over cre creation. Utterances, statements were made in the presence of rocks and they were left in that same place as an altar and Jacob is coming. And while he is there, he's having experiences because of what was done. You wonder, the forefather who was once there by the name Abraham, and he built that altar, and he left some stones scattered all over that place. What had he said? If he had sent any of those stones to call, to go and tell Jacob anything, none of those stones ever left that place. They remained in that same place. But those stones had their own way of inviting Jacob, and you come into contact with the stone, you get to inherit experiences of your father. It's a program left in creation. A program. Whatever was said and done, stones were present. It was recorded. Why? Because these stones are a product of the word. And when you speak in the presence of creation, creation is taking orders. Are you following this? Your problem is you want to say to a rock, stand up, run. That's, that's your problem now. <laughs> and yet the stone can cause your son to run towards it. Because you have given it an order. You can order things. It's not that your son will wander around, moving from place to place, looking for a, for a property. No, your son can be summoned by properties. Your children will be called by opportunities to come. Father, it's phenomenal. Genesis 28, 10. And Jacob went out from Bathsheba and went towards Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place mm -hmm. and tarried there all night. Mm. Because the sun was set, and he took off the stones of that place mm -hmm. and put them for his pillow and lay down in that place to sleep. To sleep. In that moment of darkness, here comes an experience. Mm. Your friends. They have children. Their children will have to look for something. And that's something that they are looking for. That's something who will look for your children. I'm talking of someone here who has children. Yes, Father. your children will be hunted down by money.
I'm talking, I'm saying this into the atmosphere. Years from now, this voice will be replayed. Before your children are even desperate, opportunities will look for them. Ah! Shadow of God, sit, sit, sit down, sit down. This light that we put on, <laughs> this year we are, we are putting on a personality. Yes, yes. <laughs> Jesus will fake. We're going to be wearing and putting on Jesus. Eh? Remember we're talking of the God beings, right? But the, the gods have their attire. Gods, gods, <laughs> gods, they put on light. <laughs> gods, what they put on is light. You open their wardrobe, there is only one garment there. It's light. Slide. <laughs> it's no longer a Jesus that we have in the inside. This inside Jesus is now becoming an external manifestation. There is a moment of showing off where non believers will have to see what you were concealing all these years. The Jesus in you has to become the Jesus on you. Be seated, please. We're continuing to read this light. All things were made by him and without th him. How many things? All. Yes. They were made by him. By him. Mm. And without him mm. was not anything made that was made. Yes. In him was life. In him. Who is him? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is what? The what? The, the word. The word. Uh-huh. And Jesus is God. The word was God. In him was life. Now we have discovered that there is life in him. But that life has another name. So that you know from today, if you have ever received the life of God, leave this place also knowing that the life of God is light. In him was life. In him was life. Now, in him, when that thing was in him, it was what? Life. life. Uh -huh. And the life was the light of men. And the life was the light of men. The life. Say life. Life. The life was the what? Light. Of God. Of men. Sit down. <laughs> ah. ah, the life of God, the Zoe life, the life of God is the light of men. What God calls life, this is my life, this is my life. When we see that, we call it our light. It is the light, the life which is of God is the light of men. His life is our light. His life is our light. As long as he is alive, we are visible, we are shining. Until he dies, 
if he is to die, then forget that. We know him to be alive forever. As long as he is alive forever, it means our light will shine forever. His life is our light. I will be shining as long as he is alive. His life is my light, the light of men. The light of men. The light of men. The light of men. Now keep on reading. You will see something there. See, be seated. Be seated. Yes, listen to this. Uh-huh. Verse 5. Uh-huh. And the light shineth in darkness. And darkness? And the darkness comprehended, comprehended it, it not. not. Now, that light, that light, now it's not just, it's, it's not the life that then shined in darkness. It is the life. Now we know that light to be the light of men. No longer of God. Hear, hear this. Is it? So that you know it is by the light of men that you also shine in darkness. It is the light and that light shined in darkness. The light of men shined in darkness and darkness could not comprehend the comprehension there is not understanding of light no it is the taking over the ownership you look at the comprehension it means taking into captivity darkness could not capture that light and make it its own to lay hold of so as to make one's own. To make one's own so that the darkness would have wanted to own that light. So that you are one with the world. The world is trying all within its capacity to make you their own. Take possession of. To take possession of you. This economy wants to control you. But he's saying now, but that light refused to be owned by the systems of the world. This light, darkness could not comprehend, could not own. So right now, this other side, we are waiting to see what is going to become of this system given what men are doing. On the other hand, we have to start doing so that we can participate in what is going to happen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Now, read, read, read this one again. Now, now we know the light that shined is no longer the life of God. It is the light of man. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Uh-huh. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not, could not possess it. <laughs> so, so no darkness is going to possess you this year. It's as simple as that. There is not going to be a, a single happening that will take you over. There is no event in this year planned by the devil that will enslave you. You are that light that darkness cannot own. I will not be owned by darkness. I will not be owned by darkness. Do you know any law that is put in place, not everyone is a subject to that law. There are always people that you know that will never be touched by even the laws that they, they introduce. You yourself, you are touched because you, you don't belong to their realm. 
They've chosen a platform above even what they introduce. If I can find a man under the sun who is free from any form of captivity, I understand him. Then I look at myself, I say, I can also be free. 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 Did they not pass a law that every male child has to die? Did Moses die? No. Did they not say every male child is supposed to die? Did Jesus die? No. You will see from this week that you will escape darkness. It will not comprehend you. It will not arrest you. Darkness will not defeat you. Are you following this? Sida. Usually, the you that I know, when you are told by a doctor that you have cancer, you have a disease, you start to think of what is going to become of you because of cancer. You're not thinking of what is going to become of the disease. That's light that is shining on you now. That's light now. Diseases, they come to you to die. I'm not saying you, you are not going to visit your doctor. You, you have to visit your doctor. I've, my own doctors are here. They can testify. Whatever was ever found in my body, if I'm to go back, I'm asking them to check, so how many days left for the disease to die? <laughs> Those are the updates. They are telling me. Because I want to know at this rate of resistance, how many days can this disease survive? That's a different light now. That's a different light now. Be seated, please. Be seated. You are wondering. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> All the problems that we are having, even from your country where you are coming from, there are people back home that, that are not complaining. They don't have a problem with that problem. Who are those? What's so special about them? escape darkness how do I overcome being comprehended by darkness I want to shine oh yes I want to shine I want to shine I want to shine I want to shine but I now, 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 now I hear there is darkness trying to comprehend me darkness wants to comprehend you make you its own. Imagine if it's going to go down the records that there is a darkness that owns light. Someone. Imagine. Darkness owning light. Where you go to darkness to be shown light. And darkness pulls out light to say this is, this is what I have where you are being kept by darkness 
a slave to darkness. No. It's a big no. It's a big no. I want to escape the grip of darkness. So that when I shine, I shine against the darkness. Not for the darkness. Not owned by darkness. Keep on reading. We haven't gone anywhere. It's just, we are still in John. Verse right? 6. Yeah. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. What is he coming to do? The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. The same came for what? A witness. To bear what? Witness of, of what? The light. Of the light. Yes? That all men through him might believe. So that all men through him, John, all men through him might believe. Yes? He was not that light. He was not that light. John was not that light. John was not that light. The scripture is not saying John was not light. He was not that one. Because in chapter 5 of the same book of John, verse 35, Jesus says, you were willing to rejoice in his light for a season. When John came, he was a burning, shining light. light. He was a burning and shining light. That's in John 5 verse 35, yeah, as yeah. you said, Father. This is Jesus speaking in reference to John. John. John was what? He was a burning and a shining light. Read a verse before that. But I receive not testimony from man, uh -huh. but these things I say that ye might Go a verse received. before, then we see John. Ye sent unto John. You sent unto John. You people, you sent messengers to John to inquire concerning the light. Yes? And he bear witness unto the truth. Yes? But I receive not testimony from man yes but these things i say that he might be saved yes he john was yes. a burning and shining light john was a burning and a shining light and you were what and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light in his light i'm giving you this just to show you that the, the verse that we just read in chapter 1. It's not saying that John was not light. He was just not that light. But he was light. John was light. Because you can only send light to foreign light. You require an amount of light to go ahead of light. And prepare the way for the light. The, light, the way for the light is prepared by light. Some of you need to ask God for that grace because it will become an opportunity for you to forerun light. There are so many great men under the sun who are shining as lights, but they don't have forerunners. It's a cry from great men. It's a cry from CEOs. Managing directors, they are yearning, they are waiting to identify an individual that can properly forerun them. And that individual must be in form of light. They must be burning people, shining people. It's a cry from key individual. Higher achievers are yearning today believe in God for a man and a woman who can go ahead of them and prepare what is known to be the way of the Lord. For John to go ahead of the light 
he needed to be a light. Only a man with light can identify light. The reason why you can see light today and you know it is light, it is because you are enlightened. You need light to know light. Jesus, the light, needed John, a light, to go ahead of him. But he was not that light, yet he was a light. And around him, Israel was willing to rejoice. That's what happens when your light is shining this year. There will be a rejoicing, an atmosphere of happiness in your house. You will notice there will be such joy that some, one of these days you will switch off the television and everyone is laughing. Wow. The light that brings joy. You will see it manifesting. Some of you, it's a gift that is coming upon you now. Wherever you go, you shine and there shall be happiness. You deliver people from stress. Not as you speak, but as you shine. You shine. You shine. You shine. Learn to appear. And that becomes a package to the people. Hey. Appearance. Appearance. Your appearance, know your gift. Amen. All that Mr. Bean requires is to appear. He doesn't need to say anything. The entire movie from the beginning to the end. No need to say anything. He knows what God has invested into his face. <laughs> Countenance to him has become a gift. When you shine, Jesus is saying, you, were, you rejoiced in his he, light. Mm, you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. You may be seated. You must identify people like that in your life. Whose light brings you joy. Yes. <laughs> you don't have many of such people. You have very few people that carry that kind of light. Identify them. Make a connection. So that when they are shining, you are right there in their presence, rejoicing. You have to be honest. Some of these days, one of these days you have to walk up to them and you are so honest. I enjoy your light. I enjoy being around you. I enjoy being around you. Do you know, you have people that like you so much. But they are not good at telling you why. The feeling that you bring into the atmosphere, they are not good at properly articulating it. Yet they just want to be present. They just want to be there. But learn to communicate your feelings. Your light gives me hope. Do you know? Some of you are not aware. Have you ever heard a person calling you? He's having a problem. And he's asking for it. A solution and before you give him a solution he's telling you what he's going to do and you're wondering why 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 is he even asking me he's telling you I'm so I don't even know what to do right now but I'm thinking <laughs> and before you can even start helping him he's already helping himself and because you don't know the magnitude of your light 
it's because he called you. <laughs> it's because he called you. And as he was talking to you, your light is now giving him counsel. It is still because of your assistance. Had you not, had he not called you, he was never going to find a solution to that problem. When your light begins to shine, it will bring joy. Answers to people around you. Are you listening to this? I have to let you know some of, because some of you, at the end of the day, when God starts giving you rewards, you will be rewarded for things that you cannot remember ever doing. <laughs> ever do. You can't remember holding a microphone. But you'll be shocked at the number of people that you have influenced Amen. simply by shining. When there is such a traffic jam, congestion, and everyone has lost patience, it's time for you to shine. Thank you. Everyone is angry. Everyone is showing someone something <laughs> through the window. It's time for you to shine. 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 When they expect you to be angry, chill. Relax. Take it easy. <laughs> it cannot get worse than this. No matter what happens here, I was talking to somebody some few days ago. This person was going to have a test. Driving test. And she was saying, I'm a, I'm a bit afraid. I'm a bit nervous. I said, if you are going to fail, do you think they are going to send you to jail? <laughs> They don't hang people for failure. So you are still coming back home. There is still a home for you. There is a dad for you. There is a mom for you. There is food for you in this, in this house. Refuse to be owned by darkness. And I tried to also introduce my own gimmicks of trying to encourage her. I said, do you know of me, I failed more than three times road tests before I got my license. So even if you're going to fail three, three times, even two times, you'll be better than me. And she said, am I, am I a worse driver like that? But don't take it. Hmm? Failing doesn't mean you are a failure. Failing doesn't mean you are a, a failure. Failing is simply one event that cannot define your entire life. It's one thing. It's one area. We have, I've said this over and over again. Michael Jordan, one of the best basketball players, cannot swim. <laughs> but is he a failure? Focus on one thing that can define your life. And rejoice over that. Are 
Are you following this? Are you following this? Be seated, please. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. A man sent from God, whose name was John, he came to bear witness of that light. He was not that light. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Mm -hmm. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Huh? That was? He was the true light. Jesus was the true light. Well defined light. Uh -huh. Which lighteth every man. That light lights every man. It's a light with a capacity to light every, not some. Jesus is that light that lights up every man. Jesus. This is what makes him true. His light. His light cannot diminish. You cannot exhaust him. We can all come to him and we have a share of light. And his own light doesn't go down. And the light, now that translation talks about every man that comes into the world as if every man that has come into the world has been lightened by that light. No. It's not every man that comes into the world that is given light by that light. The rest of the translation talks about him. It's him coming into the world. The light that came into the world to lighten every man. Read it, read it, read it, read it. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Not every man that cometh into the No, it's the light that cometh into the world to light every man. We can find other translations if you can. Verse uh, uh, no. BBE, uh -huh. the true light which gives light to every man was then coming into the world. Yes. That's the light. So the, the world is being visited by light. The coming of Jesus was the coming of light. Not just so that we see him shining, there is an impartation of that same light. Where his light is put on us. And people are not supposed to desire him to come back again when we have him here. To think for a moment that this Jesus that we are waiting for to come is here. Is here. We all talk of his second coming from where? He's here. Think about it. Think about it. We all talk about his second coming. Mm -hmm. But from where? From where? He is here. He is here. He is here. I was confronted with a certain very strong revelation when I was reading a certain passage of scripture and I, I, didn't, I didn't like the way disciples used to ask questions. I have questions that I think they make more sense. If, <laughs> honestly, uh, if Jesus were to come now, <laughs> he gets into his blankets and I'm there. 
I would not allow him to eat until he answers certain questions. How can you have God so present? And you have no questions to ask. No questions. No questions. No questions. So you read a certain passage and you are saying, if I was present there, I would have asked this question. What are you saying here, Jesus? What did you do to that man? How, how come, how come that, how come, how come, how come, how come? I was going to be asking those questions. So while I was thinking of that and even blaming the disciples, a revelation is coming. And he say, are you not better off than them? Because I was with them at the time. But now I'm in you. Why are you not asking me the same questions? You are blaming them for not asking those questions on your behalf. Yet they were with him. He was not in them. I'm now closer to you than when I was with them. I begin to receive revelations that some of, some of those revelations, they make you shake. Jesus, when he talks to you himself, you, you forget about everything else. You even forget about, you see, there are times when he's talking and he's, he's reminding me, he's showing me that when I'm here and I'm talking to you, it's me here. There is no reference to any other word. I am the word. I was told by the Spirit of God, sit down, sit down, sit down. I was told I had to be reminded what the Holy Spirit told me is something that I was supposed to know, even without him telling me. But I had to be told. I felt so, so ashamed. I had to be told by the Spirit of God that do you know that even Paul didn't know he was writing the Bible. Not even one writer in the Bible knew it was the Bible they were writing. We value it so much. We think those writers were aware that it was the Bible. It's no one wrote the Bible. The Bible is a compilation of scriptures. When they were writing, it was a, a, a letter. Someone wrote Acts of the Apostle to Theophila. It's a letter to an individual, not to, not to you. It was a WhatsApp message. Like, like messages that I'm sending you, you. Not knowing it would become a Bible. What are you talking about? Because very soon Jesus is going to complain that you keep on searching scriptures, thinking that in them you will find life. There is no eternal life in scriptures. You have to come to me for eternal life. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they that which testify, testify of, of me. me. John 5 39 now think about that for a moment it's a light that has shined on you now it's you that knows that Peter wrote the Bible James wrote they, did, they were not writing the Bible it's like if you are to get my phone now and you go through messages that I'm sending, sons, and those are becoming scriptures, to them, those people never knew that all of us here will be reading their letters. <laughs> and you think that is superior to Jesus? It was a letter. And you're not even ashamed you are reading a letter addressed to Timothy. You can actually see. My son Timothy. 
Yes, what then happened later happened. All scripture was then given for inspiration, for correction, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and a lot of things. Yes, it's now given. But the original intended reader was Timothy, was the Corinthian church. Blessed are you when you hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches to your specific church. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you if I see? He's saying light. Light. If they suffer, they suffer. Ours is to shine. If they die, they die. Ours is to live. That's our theme. What is killing them out there? We are killing it here. What is killing them out there? We are killing it here. This light in us will cast out all the works of darkness. <laughs> Be seated, please. Be seated. Ah. This body, you know, Kutambudzai. This body that troubles you. You have to sit down with it. Put a mirror in front of yourself and look at that body. And make it attend the service where you give it instructions. Body. This body. Body, you know what's This body can be told. Our bodies are actually full of the instructions we have given, stories we have told. We don't do that. Yeah. You know what's what? Behave, behave, behave. You tell the body to behave. <laughs> what you think is different is prophet You think there's a difference between prophet's body and your own body? The only difference is in the stories that those yeah, bodies yeah. Hear. The stories that those bodies are told, those are what are the differences. I'm investigating a statement which was uttered by Jesus from the bank, from a place of treasure. So I value what he is about to say. This is going to change your income. This light. This light. Where should people that are searching for answers go? To you. To you. To you. The life was the light. The life was the light of men. It was given. The life which is the light of men, it means it is lighting on men so that we appear, we are visible. Or that light becomes your light. And you begin to shine in your darkness. 
God understands that some of you are in very, very dark situations. He understands that. That is why before he told you what to do, he demonstrated what to do with darkness. He had his own darkness and he said, let there be what? Light. Yet he was light. He was light. And there was darkness. Yet he was light. There was darkness. Yet he was light. Yet the darkness was still there. It remained there until light said, let there be light. It means I'm light, but let it there where there is darkness. Let it there, not here. Yes, I'm light over here, but let it there in that area. Let it there be light. So you are sending pieces of yourself into there. Let my light shine there and there and there and there and there and there. To think that God was light yet darkness remained until light knew how to speak. It's a distribution of self this year into different segments of your life. If I'm to identify a measure of darkness in any of my kids, I will release myself into there. Let there be me. Let there be light. Yes. Some of you are thinking simply because I'm light, darkness is supposed to depart. Yes, it's another level. There's another level where darkness remains in the presence of light until light speaks. And the Bible says, and there was light. There, where there was once darkness, now there, there was, was light. light. In that marriage, there. Mm. You're thinking it's a very lucrative business that you're trying to run. No, that's a piece of darkness. That you need to know how to release a part of your being into that area. Invest not just your money, not just your time, not just your energy, but your light into your business, your light into your venture, your light. Yeah. Let there be me in that business. Me. I, I need my business before it can be felt in this country. Let my business feel me. 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 Me, Lord, give me mastery over this product. I want to be an authority in this country. I want to be the sole supplier of this product, of this service in this country. Let it be known that if this thing is to be known, if this thing is to be consumed, it has to pass through my hands. It's not enough for you to just come and make some few dollars so that you can buy bread and some three eggs. No. We are talking of taking over territories. Becoming authorities in different sectors. You know where most of you are making mistakes? When you are coming to church. It is in church where most of you try to shine. Yet the Bible says you are the light of the world, not of the church. You come here, not so that you not shine here, but no. Not so that you shine on us here, no. No problem in Iran. That's the problem that people have. Because they are used to preachers and prophets that are good at Kuonerero. At showing off. People are used to that. So you just inherit that from your mentor. From your mentor. Your best Ryan go show off. And then it just ends in showing off. Undermining each other and looking down. Your light is not needed here. No matter what you do in the house of God. No matter how gifted you are. Go back into the world. Go back into the industry and shine. So not so that she mara na pana pana. No good. I go to Zigaro. So my positions, positions. No one no. 
There's there so is much, no darkness here. There's so much infighting Your light is needed out there. Who's that person? Going to talk on that direct? So the person close to you, turn not to show off. Share in your pants, eh? Go do that outside. The world needs to know that we are coming. We come to church and our light is enhanced. And we go out. Devil, we are coming. Let there be light. The light is going to shine in darkness. Live your day knowing I will never be owned by darkness again. Darkness can never own you. Even your company. Your company can never own you. Ah, you're not listening to this. Your, your occupation, your career cannot own you. Some of you are not following. Your government cannot own you. Refuse to be comprehended by anything that is lesser in its brightness. When you shine, dominate darkness. Dominate darkness. Dominate darkness. From this place, you go and you stress, stress. Depress depression. Suppress what suppressed you. Subdue what subdued you. Overcome what overcame you. Move around. You go identify my places of failure. Just identify and you say, place. 2024, not anymore. I speak light over there and light over there and light over there. Ah. So, you know, there is more to life than just thinking about Kutisaka. So, the church gave me money. What am I going to eat tonight? No. No. I had to do that. I was sure I'm going to No, I just want a few who few. How many? One, three, four, five, six, three, four, seven. five, six, or seven kids. That's a very small economy. It should not be an issue. It only gira hope. It should be an issue that thinking of what they'll eat, where, or even where they'll No, go. that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. I'm going to support my constituency. My family this year will be taken care of. Are you hearing me well? That grace that brought those two. That made them to be so abundant. That grace. 
Tiko shimiri rana kuti mai warada kenda kusarun mota yenda kenda ne mwana chikoro baba warada kubuda mota yenda na mai kuti ah and now we all have to wait for one car whether the mother ah. is going to work or the father is going to Oneta mota wari pamba pane hembe one How can there be only one car at the house and yet there's more than one set of clothing? Mune hembe one here. Do you only have one outfit? Sudara mbidziri we izvo. Why is that forbidden? Andaka kudza ndi ndakambomiswa more than 6 hours by airport. Remember I told you that I want Vandi batira wachi yangu. Wachi wakaitora kupi? Wachi wakaona se unozera kuti wachi ino dura. Uh, <laughs> refuse to be comprehended by darkness this world wants to control you you are kutengera mahure avo motikari uko iwo kutengera mukadzi wako mota inoita nyaya when you buy your wife a vehicle it's an issue but when they buy one for their girlfriends it's a it's a non issue Darkness is trying to control light. One day we were one of these we were in one of these shops not there I wasn't there to buy I was just there to see what others are buying I saw a Hublot watch and they said this one is coming today to collect one of the best athletes a runner no I'm not going to mention his name he said they are coming he's coming here today to collect you see his watch you will be seeing it very soon in magazines at least you have an opportunity to see it it's in a glass he's coming to collect it today a runner And I said, what's so special? The millions that I had, millions that he paid, he's, he's, he's a runner. I said, what's so special about it? He said, you see, the way it was designed against aerodynamics. I said, I said, you're lying. You're lying. You're lying. Watch. It's just a watch. 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 Imodel is in a car. Pana katadzwa kumayene wachi pana. Is anybody here ever failed to run because of a watch? <laughs> They find ways of supporting theirs. Indi kati ndauparidza ne wachi iyo nichiona o time yangu. Ndichiparidza bunda zvinto rine misoro izvo zvezvo. Handi chero wachi inaita. And I said chero. If I was ever wanting to preach wearing such a watch, that's why I can see the time people would say that any watch will do. Rock stars anozika vachipedza band vanochikura maguitar. Rock stars as soon as they finish their performance they are tearing up their equipment breaking their guitars. Kutsika ma drums would and destroy PA system. Destroying their own PA systems. Such a madman. And people are paying money. And we have the right gospel, the right light. We have to use anything. Tell, you, you people tell me what is the footballer doing in a private gym? What is a footballer doing in a private gym? He's not a, a, a doctor. He's a footballer. 
kicking a ball. He's in a private jet. What is he doing there? Darkness has accepted that. They've accepted that. Not when light is trying to shine. They will try to quench it. When it comes to you, they want you to be thankful for what God has given you. Be sufficient. Why are you not? So we are refusing right from the beginning of the year, they will not control our light. They will not control our light. Demons cannot. Diseases cannot. Are you following me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So what you cannot see now with your physical eyes, please let your imagination see. Let your imagination see. Think about it. Allow yourself to dream. Picture. Picture. Take some photos. Picture. Picture. You are on a journey yet to arrive. Your people are yet to see what you are made of. They will come to the brightness of your rising. Why? Because God is making you a fountain of wisdom. Ideas will come out of you. Huh? Yes. 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 When your children are going to school, they are not in that category of other children. There are things that I tell children that are really children. You don't even think of committing suicide because you have failed an exam. Hmm? So you tell your daughter, daughter, do you know that you can fail the final exam? Yet there were some exams that you were writing in between and you were passing. There are people like that. When you fail the last one, this world will consider you a what? A failure. Yet you were passing everything else except that one exam. So you are still not a failure having failed. And your children are supposed to know that the reason why they are going to school, unlike the other children, other children, they have to go to school, they get a certificate, right? So that they qualify for employment. They need that so that they get a job. Unlike your children. Your children, they go to school for knowledge. They know they are coming back to run businesses already waiting. So it's not a certificate that we want them to bring because we are never, we are not never going to require their CV. Go and get knowledge. A business is waiting for you here. I'm prophesying to your children now. So let your kids go to school. Watch those Ziva Uruti. A panna pawasha mobilisa certificate here. Vachi Bakuchkor. That's the last day. Already know that they're never going to use that certificate. Because no one is going to demand it. No one is going to ask for it. But can I have a degree? But if they have their degree. Can I have a master's? They have their master's. They are employees are the ones who will know. That they are working for someone who knows what they are doing. You don't go to school with that old mentality. So that you come back and you get a job. No. You go there, you come back, you create a job. 
you create a job. You create a job. Ndukuto paritza, ndukuto shibana, ndi shiparitza kuda, ndukuto bana u. I'm actually banning it as I'm preaching now. This is banning. Vanavese wanu tsakatikira makamba ni evamu. All the children are going and dying in people's Not company. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Vako wana ndo wano pfunza ma certificates evamu. Your children will be the ones demanding certificates from their employees. Don't talk about your daughter. You see, before this year ends, some of you will have more than three established businesses. Serious ones. Serious ones. Serious ones. Your home is going to become an empire. Trust you me, what I'm saying is what I hear from the Lord. This light is shining upon you now. This light is shining upon you now. You don't give birth to vagabonds. Your children will not be beggars. Am I being heard well? Am I being heard well? Maybe seated. Check, check your next birthday. Check your next birthday. I remember Jitaura. I remember telling you. Some few days ago. I remember I was talking to my lady. He birthday. Oh no, go to Farida. One year, no, go to Inechi. And I said, this birthday where people are celebrating like this. And you are being given gifts. It's not your birthday when you are supposed to be giving the one who gave birth to you a gift. Let's consider doing that. Next birthday, you will have enough money to surprise your mama, your daddy. Ah, funga, funga, my wagabereka wana ten. Think about a mother who has given birth to ten children. Singa da is ko ane twelve. What about one who has twelve? Ungo make sure to balance some weights, some weights, some weights. Just make sure that you balance it out so that every month. Unongo shi chiga birthday so mberek every month. You'll be enjoying birthday gifts as a parent. Rako birthday war na basa mani we. Your birthday doesn't matter. Chawaka zara ndo chine basa. What you gave birth to is what matters. I'm prophesying that some of you your own children they will wipe away your tears. So think about it. So God is going to bless you because now you have a target. You already have people that you have lined up that are going to bask in your light. They will rejoice in your light. Your parents, no matter what they did to you, you have the power to forgive. Be a blessing to them. This is right, what I'm saying? Yes. Don't worry, if you feel like you are getting tired, your body is becoming weak and weak and weak. <laughs> I know my scientists are trying to discover anti-aging. I know scientists are trying to discover an anti-aging. I've already told you that there is an anti-aging. And it's called your honor. father yes. and your mother yes. and your days yes. shall be long. So, when you are in healing session, you will be coming to a healing session to be prayed you for. You derive your strength from there, ideas from there, long life from there. 
your light will begin to shine. Hakuna munu. There is no person. Ari in good books, nema parents ake. Who is in good books with their parents. Ano zimiri wa mwenje wake. Scripture ino taura iso. Who will ever have their light. Your light will never go off. The scripture says so. Your light will never go off. You see these things I'm saying, I'm saying them as the year starts so that you correct the areas that you know to be not right in your life. Is this right what I'm saying? Is this right what I'm saying? It is. Do this. And then tell me of the hand that touches you. It's impossible. No hand, no charm. Can ever hurt you. You cause your light to shine. You are listening to the word as you are coming here and you do what is right. Key people in your life, people that matter in your life. Your husband matters to you, your wife matters to you, your children matters to you, your parents they matter to you, even your man of God matters to you. Matters to you. matters to you. And you see how your light will begin to shine. Now, I'm, I'm seeing now that the, the time that is left, I'm not able to show you a few things because of time now. But hear me. Yes, I, I want you to see something because I said, I promised. I promised. Because I remember telling you people that um, yes, we <laughs> we we saw quite a lot of things, and we thought that was all. We thought there can be more to this. Than what we are seeing. We think that we have witnessed the power of God and the grace of God and the favor of God. We'll prove you wrong very soon. Let's, let's not, let's not, well, I told you that I was in a prison, right? I was sentenced, I was put in a prison, being kept in chains behind bars, not allowed to let out, to exhibit. Hmm? You know, when a thing is concealed, when a thing is concealed, and it's supposed to be kept there, until you are given permission. Once you are given clearance to say, okay, you can open the window a little bit. A little bit, not much, a little bit. For these people, because you... you if we had started ministry doing the things that you are going to see happening, almost everyone was going to be here. I know it's a statement that some of you might not believe, but it's there in the Bible. Do you know in the Bible, the Bible, that scripture that we were reading, Jesus, the Bible says, and when he went into the temple, all men came to him. But you never went there. <laughs> it's there in your Bible. And all men went to him. All men gathered unto him. All men. You mean everyone in Jerusalem went there? It was just in a temple. Yet the Bible is saying all men. Only those that went were men. Yeah. Yet some of you, you chose this ministry even before you could see what you are going to see. Mm. You chose. <laughs> it's 
So now when you begin to see what you're going to see, I know that is not going to be the reason for your stay. You are here already, even before you. You think you have seen. No, you are blind. I know what I'm saying. You were walking in darkness all these years. And early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him. All the people. All the people came unto him. Do you think everyone in the Middle East went into that little church? Yet all the people people. So I will make sure that <laughs> I, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want people to be able to experience God. God, God must be experienced. Yes. That's where, that's where we are going now. Because I know there is a lot of speech, sayings, rumblings out there. People are good at talking. And I told you that a little horn has a big mouth. You know the horn is little when the mouth is too big. Men of God, we are good at talking, which is good, but It's not in speech only. It's in the demonstration. It's in the demonstration. Demonstration. Jesus said, I'm not the only one. In another passage of scripture, let's don't go there. He said, I witness. My father is a witness. And he went on to say, the works also that I do, they bear witness. We will know if God did not send me to you. This Maybe what I saw was a false vision. If he sent me to you, then very soon the journey is about to begin. Ah. Get ready, we are about to take a walk. You and me together. We are walking in light and not in darkness. Huh? Mm -hmm. My time is not okay. But you, you, you know when I, when I blame time, I'm not trying to run away. You know. You know. You know. Because I know when this thing is about to happen, it's not like we have to, to call for it to come. No. I'm even happy that I, I got a bit of clearance. I'm even happy. I'm even happy. It's a bit of clearance, but it's unlike anything that you have seen.
we will be allowed here to converse, to touch the Lord. <laughs> uh, let's all stand. Let's all stand. I see a few of you that are seated. You can all stand. Let's all stand. Do you know that the reason why some of you are so, so much afraid? You fear too many things because you have never experienced the most terrifying thing. You have never seen the brightness of the Lord. You have never been exposed to what is more terrifying. If you have a glimpse, if you interact with God. You know, when you play with lions, you stop fearing cats. There is no way you can ever be afraid of a cat if you are spending time with lions. I'm telling you the reason why most of you are afraid of the devil. You haven't spent time with the Lord. You see what I'm talking about. You lose all your fear. You know. In fact, you will become even very stubborn. Because you will fear nothing. Because you have touched something that can never be touched. You will touch it. Let everyone else keep on praying for revival, praying for that. No, we have it here. <laughs> Remember those years back, God wanted to, wanted us to start. Yes. It was just a glimpse of little, 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 little things here and there, here and there, here and there. And he said, no, 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 wait. Wait. Keep it. Mature it. Mm -hmm. So, I will let you witness the glory of God first hand. Do you know when, when, ah, okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me leave it. Let me, let me leave it. Let me, let me leave it. Let me leave it there. Some of you, you, don't, you are not sure of this because do you know when Moses Moses when he comes back he is not just telling people that um, I'm coming from the presence of God. No. People were allowed by God to see the glory coming. Right? Yes. Yes. A cloud would come and it would cover the mountain and Moses walks in. When he comes out, the cloud goes back. And people were permitted by God to witness that conversation, that dialogue between divinity and humanity. They were meeting as people physically are witnessing Because if, if we don't show you that glory of God, and all we do is quote scriptures, quote scripture, quote scripture, quote scripture. Who cannot do that? Theologians can do that. Professors can do that. Anyone can quote scriptures. Even the devil can quote scriptures. But there are, there are things, there are certain levels of glory that charms cannot produce. Right. 
wizards cannot produce. We are not talking of certain glory that you then see on YouTube or where <laughs> some editors would have playing games. No. No, we don't need a television. We are here physically. Yes, but our eyes are here. We want to venture into those dimensions where all things are possible. All things are possible. I'm just using this little time that I now have, which is not enough for what I wanted to show you. I, want to, I just have to say some few things in closing. He was telling me, the Lord, that you look at what is, because I, I had things that were troubling me. How can this be? How can this be? How can that be? And he said to me, this is the problem. When we're talking about this comprehension, that the darkness could not comprehend light, God seems to be very, very concerned with the way that the church has lost its light to a point where there is more light in the world than in the church. There is more light. There seem to be more light in the world than in the church. So the restoration of light okay. is our mandate okay. this year. I to sit down physically, not in the spirit, physically, to see prophecies concerning the world. People are busy dishing out prophecies that are far from prophecy. Go and go and go and find out what prophets are saying. It should never be said by prophets. It's not in the category of prophecies. It's not. It's not. God said to me, this is why reasonable people have stopped coming into my house. Because people representing me have proven to be unreasonable. Okay, okay. There is more darkness in church than in the world. Outside people are more enlightened. Okay. What we are considering, we are celebrating as prophecy now. A prophet is coming out. Prophets, many, it's not one. Go and find out. Many in there copying each other. Copying each other. This one says that. Says in the, in the, you hear prophecy like technology is going to increase. There will be serious technology. Where is this guy stay? Do you think serious people are ever going to come to church? Is this what we have become as the church? I'm seeing in the spirit very soon we won't be using these, these, these cards in the banks. It's going to be something technological. Say, where are you staying? You yourself, you, are, you feel it's a, it's a prophecy and everyone needs to know and write it down. Why are we so hungry for prophecy? Why are we so desperate for prophecy? Okay. I see a prominent figure dying.
And anyone that dies who's prominent, prophets what? Fulfilled. We are prophesying people, some of them are almost dead, they are sick. And he told me, this is the reason why my body, reasonable people, can no longer come. Because mm. people represent, that's why I was talking about a light that foreruns the light. Ah. Unless you are a light, you cannot forerun the light. Because some realize that, oh, something happened last time. Have you seen how many prophecies were given concerning a disease now? <laughs> Every prophet is trying to make sure he includes also a disease. There's some kind of a disease that is coming now. <laughs> Cover every area. But I tell you the truth. Slowly but surely, as this light increases, you will notice. I'm telling you this, even as prophecy, mature people, spiritual people, are going to lose desire for such things. People are going to look for an authentic word from God and manifestations of his glory. Telling you the truth. It's a graduation. We have graduated in this ministry. There are things that we still desire to have. Let Baba come to me, call me out, and give me a prophecy. That has to be done. I'm not saying it's wrong. It has to be done. But it's a lower level. When you mature, when you mature, I'm talking of things that you know I can do so well by the grace of God. It's his grace entirely. I don't even qualify for that. When it comes to apostles, Paul says I'm the least, even me, I'm the least. But you know when Paul said that, some believed him. They believed him. How many people believe that I'm uneducated? Because I said I'm uneducated. The same people, if I tell them I'm the shortest man of God, even the shorter ones, they will still believe me. They ride on my own humility because I know the grace of God. I want people to see God more than they can see me. Hear me. Hear me. I've never met one man who was given prophecy to a point where he was satisfied. Not one. I'm standing here today as a prophet. I'm telling you this. You can prove me wrong. Not even one man. I've seen a man sitting under the word of God and got satisfied by the message, the preaching, the teaching of the word. And most areas are covered as compared to prophecy. We create more hunger in people. There is always one area that you want the prophet to, to elaborate on. He misses out something every time. Mm -hmm. So prophecy is so that you come. It's a bait. When you are fishing. We are fishers of men. So as a fisher, you must know the baits. Baits, even all the miracles that we can ever do, these are baits. So that when you come, you then hear the word which is the light. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. 
Who doesn't want to be prophesied to? All of us, we want to be prophesied to. Who doesn't want to prophesy? All of us, we want to prophesy. But I'm telling you what is more important. Why is it some of these gifts can never make churches grow? Can never make churches grow. I've told you this. Pastors with the biggest churches are not prophetic. So that you know. Pastors with members who are more prosperous wow. are not prophetic. Mm. They are teachers of the word. Yes. Who would prophesy like Elijah? But how many members? You would stay in the mountain a lot. I'm saying this because I know you like it. And I'm not touching something that I cannot offer. We can offer this day in, day out. Yeah. But I'm telling you what will help you grow 2024. 2024, in as much as prophecy is important, it's not about going up and down trying to identify a man of God who can call you out with a finger and start to prophesy to you. If you cannot make use of the teaching of the word of God that I'm giving you now. No prophet will ever help you out of your situation. Are you following me? Yes. But prophet in Dimakati Jai Zaka is so to under Jai Rezo. But you're the one who made us get accustomed to prophecy. Hey, and do you know what I'm doing? I'm also confessing that I was in a period of growth. Won't you also forgive me? I'm confessing that I was growing. I even have sermons from back then that I wouldn't want to hear now. I cannot lie to you. There was a time in my life I felt if I'm able to heal the sick physically, physically, if I can heal physical sicknesses from people, that's it. I'm satisfied. That's it. I, I won't ask, Lord, I, I won't bother you for anything else. Until I'm, I saw it happening. And he came back to me. He said, what are you thinking? Can we still stick to your word? No, 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 Lord. Maybe something else. I also thought the prophetic is key. I needed it so much. But I didn't stay there for too long. I had to restrain myself because I kept on hearing from the Lord, this is not the ultimate. This is not the ultimate. People are never going to grow by this. They will develop hunger and trust in you. They are looking forward to hear me through you only. Let me have the people. Let me talk to my people when they are at home. Teach them. These are my people, not your people. If they are born again, my sheep hear my voice. Make them my sheep. Hand mm. over the sheep to me. Let them come. They are desperate for prophecy. Give them my word. Mm. And they go back and I talk to them. I talk to them. I'm helping some of you men of God here. Some are still here. You've got your own ministries. I saw some of them here. Get out of this unnecessary competition. Most of what the prophets are now saying is complete foolishness. A list of rubbish. Just saying too many things and you wait for one thing to happen and you become, what is that? And people that are smart, that have more light, they see that as a job. Except us in church, including the prophet cannot see, but people out there, they see this is a job. You hear what these people are saying? Huh? 
Let's be serious when it comes to this word which brings light. Let's be serious. Now, I'm waiting for one person to say, I'm saying that because I can't do it. Then I'll ask you, <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> so, what are we going then to be seeing in terms of, I'm saying, you will see, we'll be able to balance, allow you to see the glory, you'll see miracles that you have never seen, and then I will talk. I'll show you something, and then we talk. Show you something, and then we discuss it. I'll show you something, let's see it. You choose, you tell me what is it that you want to see happening now. We do it and then we talk about it. We do it and we talk about it. There is nothing that this power cannot do. You want to see nature obeying us Come. We will teach you how to talk like gods. How to change your atmospheres. You are not a slave to the devil. Demons are under you. We will teach you all that. Not so that you come to church and you see one man who is demonstrating power over evil. No, 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 no. You need that power as your portion. You do that to your own demons. Oh, my God. The prophetic is there. Several times you get tested. You know, if, if your family, let's say you are fake, and your family is suspecting that you're fake. They would, they would not even try you with the prophetic. Do you know how many times my children have come to me having forgotten their password on their phone? How many times they have come, including my wife, having traveled from abroad, brought in bags, and all of them, they have cords, and she has forgotten the number. All the bags are locked. <laughs> she has forgotten. No, she brings the bag. I wasn't there when she was doing all this. Now she's bringing the bags. And I have to try only once. I'm talking about her. This is your, your own wife. She has seen you prophesying to others. Now we have a situation here. Can you open it? Huh? Do, do you have a choir there to first of all sing for you? <laughs> Can you find those numbers on Facebook? <laughs> and from you unlock all the bags. Then from there you come to church and you just teach the word. You think I'm not saying anything? Naturally, I'm not a talkative person. I only talk about the word. Anything else, I'm quiet. I don't even know. When it comes to the things of the spirit, then I open my mouth. I open my mouth. Power can be tested. Power can be proven. Power can be proven. I like what some of the exercises that we have sometimes with pastors. I remember one day telling them that, do you think I have an enemy that I wish dead now? Do you honestly think I have an enemy that I wish dead? Ah. <laughs> I said, when it comes to trying, I think that day we were talking about this this scripture that you read, summoning thunder and giving it an assignment. That day was serious. I would thunder as you do, I would thunder as you do, my men. Zirinya. 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 Zirin
Diana na kuna ushanisa mimi bana. Who can use stand here? Who can use light here? Mnokundu kana waro ike. Mese muri bana ba mese. Giving over come by which chechirezeri overflow. Share share one moon. And there's not a single person. Ani men. Who is like But you must know how to operate these things. Even you pastors, you are, allowed, you are not allowed to follow a man that you cannot prove, that you cannot test. Mm. See, my own family is testing. So if they call me prophet, they know. You prove. You, you give me any enemy of mine that you know, then we write the name down. You write the date down. Mm. It's you. Mm. You write the date, you give me the name, and then you say this one. Then we target. It's not going to be anything. It's not like an accident, like people will say maybe there was foul play. No. <laughs> oh. no, 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 My enemy can fight me for five years if I give him five years. He can fight me for 20 if I give him 20. He can fight me for only a month if I give him a month. The Bible is saying here they could not touch him because his hour had not what? Come. I'm saying this because I know some of you, you are struggling with little, little problems. You don't know how to use power. Personally, I would rather have enemies that I'm having now than to lose these ones and smart ones come. I would rather keep the enemies that I have. Because <laughs> enemies are supposed to be replaced. When you do away with these ones, they will have to be replenished. In one of these days, if you keep killing them, you get a smarter one. When you realize that your enemy is weak, your enemy lacks strategies, it's a better enemy to keep. Some of you right now is because you killed a stupid witch. You send lightning and you killed that witch and someone smarter inherited the witchcraft. Now you're dealing with a more educated enemy now. You should have kept him. You should have kept that ignorant friend. What most of you people think is revenge is only when it is death. You will see that most of your enemies, if you are to investigate their lives, they flaunt, of course, they, they seem to be like they are shining. All of them are struggling. I've told you this before. I don't have one enemy. Any man, any man you can think of, whether he's a man of God or what, who has fought me. <laughs> they have never found rest. No peace at all. It's given. It's designed that way. Are you following me? Why am I sh showing you all this? This is how your light shines in darkness. This is how your light shines in darkness. I will not stop shining because of darkness around me. I know how to manage my darkness. I know how to deal with my darkness. I know.
Someone is looking at his time and he's saying, from that time, if he had only been demonstrating the things that he's talking about until now. <laughs> it's, it's because I was going to say, this? Because you don't know what those things are. <laughs> they will look for you, Kubasa Mangwana. They will look, they will look for you. You will be here until tomorrow. You want us to do that now? Go to, to the toilet first and come back. <laughs> ah! So, yes, the darkness was thick, but I saw lights. So, we are going to quickly equip you right from the beginning of the year. We don't even want there to be too many Sundays in between. No. We want people to put on this armor of light. And because of that armor that you are putting on, you will see that works of the devil in your life will be cancelled out. Works will be cancelled out. As you go, I'm going to give you the floor, church. You have never heard this before. Remember before I would say, what's your question? What's your question? What's your question? No, it would be, what's the miracle? Mm. Come here. And I bring you here. You will choose the things that you know to be impossible in your life. Here. We don't want to waste the power of God on things that no. you're already capable of I'm doing. giving you time to think of the impossible. Think of the impossible things. Think of the what? Impossible. The impossible. What you know to be impossible. That's what we're going to be doing here. That's the nature of our services here. Impossible things. After you've seen a miracle, then we give you light. What you've seen, this is what you can do to reproduce it. Now you can go. Wherever you go, this thing that you've seen, you can also do. Give me some notes and we equip you with that light. We equip you with that light. There is something wrong in the way that I do miracles if I cannot make you also do. There is something wrong in the way that I'm prophesying. If I remain the only prophet who can see into your life. There is something wrong in the way that I'm prophesying. I must prophesy to you to an extent where I leave you prophesying to yourself. That's proper ministry. That's proper edification. Which, brought, which is brought about by the prophetic. You are, you, are, you are given an ability to also hear God. Why? Because the prophet has spoken to you. You know there is this guy coming to meet me tomorrow. You know there is, in a, there is, there is a contract that is going to be signed in the next 17 days. You know When the papers finally come, you know I've seen this before. You don't need to ask God. You are signing. Because you have seen it. You and God are two witnesses which is going to make every statement about your life true this year.
Me and God. Me and God. Lift up your hands wherever you are. We'll have, we'll divide our time into two next Sunday. We'll have the acts. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, if there is any devil in your body, that devil is praying that God takes me before I come back again. <laughs> There is prayer happening. Now I'm telling you, demons are praying. Your matters are being sorted now. You can put your hands down now. That was a prayer. There. That was a prayer. You are going to bring your altar, your seed, to the altar. As you are going out, notice Moses was not aware that his face was shining. The cloud over your face has been removed. As you are going, as you are going, where you have had access denied, it's access granted. Some of you you fought this battle. You tried to use everything that you had at your disposal. Your time, your energy, your academics, you have failed. But I promise you, light will not fail you. This armor, when this armor fights for you, I know you have got a lot of opposition. So do I. Do you have enemies? Yes. Do I have enemies? Yes. Now our enemies, they survived last year. Right? You know what they think? They think we will try to deal with them. That's what they think. They are convinced that we were trying and we were failing. Let's see this time around. Anyone who doesn't want me to succeed is my enemy. Why is it that you don't want me to be happy? Anyone who wants you to cry, who will cry first. Amen. That's a prophetic decree. If they plan to expose you, they will be exposed before you are exposed. Anyone who is going to plot your downfall or your burial, they will be buried before you even die. I know what I'm saying. If enemies are smart, they should know. Especially mine. I don't 
do things in darkness. I come to light and I make it public. And once that happens, the rest is history. You must know, the devil must know, we will not keep fighting him here. No. Huh? I will show you at the introduction when I come in, I will show you a dimension which is beyond casting out demons. And many people know how to do that. Many preachers know how to do that. And we have ended at that level. And yet not many know how to cast away. Some of you people, demons afflicting you now are demons that have been cast out. It's no longer in you. But it is still with you. Following you. Monitoring you. And you can feel the presence of the devil around you. Here comes another level. Demons can be cast away. So that your atmosphere is free from the influence of evil spirits. You can bring out your seed if you've got an offering that you're going to put on the altar. Let me speak over that seed. Bring it out. Father, I release grace upon every heart, upon every soul, upon every spirit willing to finance and to support your agenda. I pray that as they finance your work, finance their work. In the name of Jesus, I pray that every case from now is broken. In Jesus' mighty name. Choir, give us a good song. And as we are celebrating, rejoice in this light. And you put your seed on the altar. You tell your neighbor, Sunday is Sunday. Sorry, sorry. Please. Just hold on where you are. Just hold on where you are. Please, please, please just hold on. Just hold on. This is a very important announcement. Please just hold on wherever you are. This is a very important announcement. You've got to get this. All ladies that are in Bible college or those that are married to student pastors, Please register your names with your respective uh, pastors, the lady pastors. Register your names with your respective lady pastors. Who will in turn forward those names to Mama Kufa? Thank you. Jesus. Simuta, 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 